Hey there all you fellow Droidiacs, this is David with the Droid Workshop, and I think I'm finally done with Guido. Well, done is not really the right word, is it? Because are we ever truly done with our projects? <laughs> now I could come back to it about six months from now and go, why didn't I do that differently? But I'm finished for now, and I'm happy with the way it turned out. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I got the arms finished. I'm going to be showing you how I got the eye worked on. And I'm going to be showing you how I got the weathering done. I'm even going to be showing you how I made my own custom base for this, for display. And showing you some things that I've learned along the way and things that I've seen other people do. And hopefully this will help you with your project. So why don't you come along with me as we finish up with Guido. All right, let's get started. To start off today, we've got all the arm parts. I'd like to point out something I think I touched on in the last video, but it bears repeating. When you get your files from Droid Division, they don't include mirrored or duplicate parts. The lower arms, for example, there's only the right side, which you'll see an inset R on the inside of the elbow joint. You'll have to use your printer settings to mirror this part for the left arm. The shoulders are already two pieces for the file, and the rest of the arm parts don't have to be mirrored, but you can if you want to. You'll notice on one side of the elbow piece, there's a hole. When this is inserted into the upper arm, the hole should be seen through the rectangle opening. This is there to add a screw or a bolt to hold the elbow in place. I'll show how I did that in just a little bit. One thing I did notice is the wrist joint is a bit snug, and this is a good thing because you definitely don't want the hands to be falling out. But you may need to sand it down just a little bit and use a rubber mallet to get it in there. So just be careful and only take off what you're comfortable with. The finger joints, like I said, don't have to be mirrored. And if you don't, just be sure to note which side has the larger bolt opening for the cap nut. One side will have the cap nut on top and the other will have it on the bottom. It's not a make it or break it deal, unless you're a little bit OCD. Now on to the sanding again. I've learned a lot with printing this droid and for the next one, I'm definitely gonna play around with the settings for supports because I had a lot of rough spots. It's not too much that I can't live with it or fix it, but getting it right in the printing will save lots of finishing time later. and sanding again. I chose to do all of this by hand, mainly so I could get into the places that are hard to reach with the orbital sander. Time to tape off where I want it to stay silver. I could have done the same thing as I did with the legs and just repaint the silver parts later. But these parts of the arm are flat enough to have the tape stick, and it will save time later. And you can see my mini pit for reference. Painting is done, and it's time to start putting things together and adding the detail paint. Mm -hmm. 
I did the same trick for the shoulders as I did for the hips and put the barrel nut in the upper arm, set the bolt, and backfilled with hot glue to hold it in place. You'll also notice I have a few extra parts here. These are not part of the Droid Division files and I made them for this build. They're supposed to be wiring from the upper arm to the elbow and the parts print with holes in them for this purpose. But I wanted something a little different and I had an old CPAP hose laying around, so I whipped up an elbow cap that the cap nut can go through, as well as a shaped upper cap for the upper arm. The upper cap has a hole in the base, so you can screw it to the upper arm. I'm going to host those files for free on my website and on the Facebook groups. There's a link to both in the description below. Time to paint the details. Add a little bit of hot glue to hold the pipes in place and attach the arms to the torso. plan for today is to show how I made this into the, the eye light for my droid. Got these touch lights at Target and it's got one single LED right in the middle but with this diffuser on the camera it looks like the whole thing is lighting up. Here is what you have. It kind of looks like Tony Stark's second arc reactor, Iron Man 2. So you've already got the one in the dead center, that's LED zero. Then you've got one, two, and three. So that's what I'm gonna be connecting to to make this thing a little bit brighter. These are small LEDs, panel mount LEDs that I got for a different project a while back and I'm gonna be using three of them. Time, Time to, go to, to go to school. school. LEDs, or light emitting diodes for those that aren't sure, have been around for a long time. The potential for them was discovered in 1907 by Henry Joseph Round when he saw that a 10 volt current through a silicone carbide crystal made a yellowish light. But it wasn't until 1962 when Nick Holonak Jr. made the first actual red LED. On a typical LED, the long post is the positive or anode, and the short post is the negative or cathode. Diodes only allow electrons to flow in one direction, from positive to negative, so make sure to take note of which side is which when making a circuit. As you can see in this diagram, the cathode side is usually marked with a notch or a flat side. You can use this as an indicator in case the posts are the same length which you might see if you scrap out old electronics for Greeblies. The low energy requirements and the vast improvements in the amount of light emitted have made LED lights the prime choice over incandescent for illumination, energy savings, and space. But for droidiacs, awesome geeks, and fellow entrepreneurs like us, they just look awesome in our builds. The LEDs that I'm using here are flat panel mount and have a notch on the front to show the negative side. I use the solder to join the three posts together on each side before adding the wiring. Don't worry if your exposed wire is a little bit long, 
Just solder it close to the casing and snip off the excess to avoid possibly shorting out the circuit. And as a side note, be sure to test the lights after you attach each one to make sure you have it right. This will save some frustration in the end if you miss something. Another side note, this footage is from my second light modification. On the first one, the original footage I shot was way too blurry and from so far away you couldn't even see what I was doing. Also the one you'll see me put into the droid later has longer wiring for the LEDs and I actually thought to make them more confined for this build. But what I didn't do, and I'll fix it for the next one, is add a small separate battery pack so I won't have to worry about damaging the eye later when I have to change the batteries. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. A little hot glue to hold the LEDs in place. And success! All three extra lights work. Now to finish the eye. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. All right, so we are ready to move on now. I uh, picked up some four inch Christmas ornaments, clear plastic from Hobby Lobby. They were on discount because it's not Christmas time yet. I'm gonna start by getting rid of that. Now, if you notice on these Christmas ornaments, there is a seam I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but on the picture. And there's also the uh, production hot nub down here. So you're gonna wanna use the flat side, or the clearest side. Well, turn off. So the easiest way to get this in there is use your lens as a base, or use your, use your eyepiece as a base, and then just somewhere in here, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but somewhere in here, and, Make sure it doesn't move around a whole lot. I'm just going to tape it on. Don't worry about where the tape is. You can guess at that later. So we're just going to draw around like this. It's always better to go too big than it is too little. Even if you have extras to spare. That way you can always cut off more of what you need to remove rather than the other way around. So, for this, we're just going to freehand the line. Okay, so, now we've got our line, and we're going to cut. Just a round cutting disc on a Dremel. Okay. Now, Got the basic cut, so we're gonna test fit it. After we get out all these little snot balls right there. Okay, now before we even put it inside, you can see that it's not really going to fit like that. So we do need to cut off a little bit more. And for that, now that we've cut it, you can just use a regular pair of scissors. clean edge. Let's see if this fits. Beautiful. Right down inside. Nice. For this one, I'm going to keep the outside nice and clear so it's shiny, but because I want this to go on the inside like that, we can check it. So you can even push right through the plastic right there to turn it on and off. So, but what I need to do is I need to make the inside of this um, opaque. So I'm going to use a fresh clean 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm just gonna scratch up the inside. Now it's all nice and scratched up. So, put that on there. And 
Um, on the video it's kind of spreading it out, which is what I want, but up close you can see the individual lights there, 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 and in the middle. So I think that actually looks good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and get that put on the droid. Oh, yes. And once that's in there, lens ring. Stick that right down on top and that will hold it all in place. Now the way I'm going to do this is since I want to be able to access this to get to the batteries um, in this and if I ever needed to change it out for any reason, I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on this ring to hold it down in there so that everything is held in place. Alright, so I need to make sure that this stays in place and like I said, I'm just going to hot glue it in there temporarily just so it can uh, I can be able to take it out later but I put some spacers in there just by folding up some tape I got three spots and that's where I'm gonna hot glue not a whole lot just enough to hold it in place because like I said I want to be able to remove it later to change out the batteries back here because that's the only way you can get to them so, that in place, and I'm going to put the lens cover in, or the lens, and then the lens ring. Now before I do that though, I'm going to just dab in three spots for the lens ring. This hot glue is very hot, and it is wanting to melt my lens. And even if this lens ring does break next time I try to take it out to change the batteries, I can always print another one because they're relatively simple. Just about maybe half an hour's worth of printing time. And with that, the pit droid is done. Or is it? Now we move on to the weathering. There are a lot of weathering techniques out there. Some are more complex than others, and the amount of weathering depends on your personal taste. Some people make it so intense it looks like it's been through hell while others keep it light and simple, just enough to show that it's been somewhere. For me, I'm a middle of the road guy. Since the base coat is silver with the red on top of that, the method I'm using is dry brush. This puts just enough paint on the brush to put on your project, but not so much that it's overpowering. On a droid like this, one place to really pay attention to are the corners and raised surfaces because they would be the areas to get hit first and hit the most. So a few streaks here and there along the edges will give it the look I want. Joints and high touch surfaces, like the feet and hands, will see the most wear and tear, so these places can get a bit more of the silver dry brush, especially at the top of the head. I'm not perfect and I may redo this later, but I imagine the droid raising up under a ship or container and banging its head repeatedly. So more scuff marks and scratches here. Grime time. Grime and the amount done, again, is subjective. And again, techniques vary. What I found that I like the most is using a sponge brush, adding black water-based acrylic paint to the recessed areas, then hitting it with a spray bottle of water to make the paint flow into the recesses and kind of drip out too. I'm trying to make it look like there was at least an attempt to clean off the grime and grease, but not all of it could be reached. And just like the silver for the scuff marks, the grime needs to go heavier in the joints because oil and grease build up in those places the most. Up until now, I've had the feet attached to a temporary base so it could stand on its own. 
but now it's time to make a more permanent display. Thankfully, I had some scrap wood laying around to do this, and I didn't have to take out a second mortgage on my house to afford it. I wanted a 15 inch wide hexagon base, and what I'm doing here is a method I discovered a while back using a formula for making near perfect hexagons. Take the size you want and multiply it by 0.86, because the shorter side will be 86% of the long side length. For my 15 inch wide base, this meant the front to back would be 12.9 inches. Draw a line through the halfway point, in this case just under 6.5 inches, and then use a speed square, which I have one but I couldn't find it in time to film. This will give you your 60 degree angles from each side. If you have a table saw, you can also set your slide to a 30 degree angle and get the same result. Next up are the holes for the base lighting. I wanted just a little bit of a swarzy wall look to it. So I marked out these holes and cut them with a hole saw and a jigsaw. I also wanted the top of this to be as smooth as possible. So I tried out the acetone and filler putty method. First with regular filler, then with liquid metal. I set it aside to dry and moved on to the 2x4s. You can use either a table saw or a miter saw to get the 30 degree angle you will need for each side. I got a little distracted and drilled pilot holes into each end, but you really only need to drill the pilot holes on one side. Now at this point, I got the result that I wanted, but I totally screwed up because of bad time management. I dipped out too much Bondo hair for a small batch and didn't realize until I opened the hardener cream that it had separated, hence the pool of red liquid you see me fighting with. Pro tip, don't do this. It makes a big mess and it's very frustrating to work with. Like I said, I can live with the end product, but being in a hurry just created more work for me in the end. I skipped over sanding down the Bondo and painting the primer and silver coats of paint on the flat top. I only wanted the top to stay silver and the lower sections to be black. Time for a quick tape off and spray. Since I want to light up the base and I happen to have some scrap acrylic laying around, a quick squaring up with the table saw as well as making some holding blocks and the acrylic is in. I've done a lot of projects over time, so my Greedly and Scrap Piles are a bit bigger than my wife would like. But in this case, it all worked out because I had picked up some blue LED strips that was perfect for this. You can also see a 9 volt battery holder and switch plate that I whipped up in Blender and printed out for this. It's nothing special, but it works for me and I'll have those files hosted on my website for anybody who wants it.
All right, so that's gonna just about do it for this project. Like I said, you're never really done with anything, so I may come back and do a little bit more work on him later, but I'm happy with what I have for now, and I'm very pleased with how it turned out, and my daughter is totally over the moon with how this thing looks. So I'm gonna call it done for now, and I'm gonna move on to something else, and I don't know what I'm gonna do next, but I'll figure it out. So if you like what you saw here today, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see all videos as soon as they're released. And as always, may the droids be with you.